I've gotten into the habit each month of shooting one of these sort of sum up of, of the previous month, what's coming up in the next month types of videos that I, I call updates. And I'm providing these for my, my viewers and subscribers so that they can stay on top of anything that they might have missed, uh, that they might find interesting and they want to go back to. Usually I'll try to provide some links. Uh, but you know where to find things if, you, if you've played around on the channel. And I want to give a sort of heads up about, about things that are coming up in the, the current month, things to look out for, since I know everybody's very busy. Uh, one of the things that I do want to mention before I talk about the month of February is a few of the things that are coming up in, in March. Um, we're actually doing something quite new that we're calling a meetup. It's actually under the Philosophy Eats title, uh, which we used for some, some events previously, but this, this fits as well. We're going to do meetups quarterly where viewers, subscribers, people who, who follow me on other pages like my, my Facebook page or my Google Plus profile or Twitter or are connected with me on LinkedIn or any of these sorts of things can actually meet me face to face and talk philosophy, um, chat about other things if they want to as well. This first one we're actually going to be having here in Kingston, New York. Uh, we're going to do it at, at uh, Panera, uh, which is on the north side of Kingston, if you know Kingston at all. I'll put a lot more information about this. Actually, there's already a Google Plus um, site for it, uh, or Google Plus event. And it'll be on Sunday, March 16th. All the information that's relevant is, is available in the Google Plus uh, event. So I'm really looking forward to that. I always enjoy, I've done this a few other times, but just one-on-one. -on -one. I always enjoy meeting people who, who uh, like these videos and, and get something out of them and getting to chat with them and finding out what they're doing with philosophy, how philosophy is, is impacting their life, uh, because I'm, I'm all about philosophy into practice. That's the model for, for Reason.io. We, uh, we don't want it to just be a purely theoretical activity. We want it to be something that enriches people's lives. So that's one thing we've got going on. I'm going to be doing another Dr. Sadler's Philosophy Forum as well. This is going to be a little bit different as well because I'm bringing in a guest this time. A uh, friend and colleague of mine uh, from who I know from, from Alistair McIntyre circles who works on, on virtue ethics and a number of other things. Really brilliant guy. And I'll put, I'll put information about that as well. Um, I'll also be doing another one of the glimpses into existence at the Kingston Public Library on March 29th. So if you're in the local area and would like to get some philosophical stimulation on a Saturday morning, that's, that's a good place to go. If you live in the Mid-Hudson area, consider stopping in. Now let's talk about February. So February was a pretty, pretty packed month for, for me and for my, my wife and partner. Um, I'll tell you a little bit why on her part towards, towards the end of, of this. Um, I gave a talk out at Salve Regina University in, in uh, Newport, Rhode Island. I was invited to address the Pell Honors students by a good friend and colleague of mine, um, Khalil, who, who brought me in. This has been quite a while in the making. He, if you watch the video for it, he's the guy at the very beginning of the video who's doing the introduction. And they asked me to do a talk about Nietzsche's early work, The Birth of Tragedy, so that's exactly what I did. Um, and it was a lot of fun, beautiful campus, very motivated students, good question-answer period. I had, a, I had a great time out there, and I'm very grateful that they, they brought me out to do that talk. Just before that, we had been up at Green Mountain College in Vermont. Uh, my wife, Andy Shaka, is uh, the Center for the Excellence in Teaching and Learning at the Culinary Institute of America, and so I was sort of tagging along on that one um, because there, Green Mountain is billed as the greenest college or university in the United States, and they have a lot of things having to do with environmental studies, but also with food networks. And so the culinary has a, has a big interest in that, in, in sort of uh, tapping into their master's program. And while I was up there, it was really cool. Um, there's a couple fellow SIU grads. You know, that's where I went to, to 
my graduate school, uh, Southern Illinois University. There, there's uh, several of them up there, and so it was a good time to sort of reconnect and talk about perhaps coming up to do some, some other uh, talks or, or workshops or things like that on my part for, for their students. I'm also, I also had a great time talking with the master's students who were there. We, we drove up through a snowstorm, so we made just the hind end of the conference. Uh, but we got to go to you know one of the workshops and, and the dinner and get to, to meet and talk with some very interesting people. So that was a lot of fun. Um, shortly after all of that, that was all in one week of February, I did the second installment of the Glimpses into Existence series at the Kingston Public Library. The, this is a series that's going to run the entire year, one per month, usually the last Saturday of the month. And this year the theme is 11 existentialist authors, since I'm doing a lot of work on existentialism these days. And the first one in January began with sort of a general overview. The second one focused on Søren Kierkegaard, his work, his influence, some of his key ideas. The video for that's available, um, and you can, you can watch it course in my channel. I'll link to it here. Um, oh, and we did, of course, a, a Dr. Sadler's Philosophy Forum a little bit earlier in the month. That was a lot of fun. I, these are Google Hangouts on Air that I do where I can get some interaction from my subscribers or viewers or people who, who follow me asking questions, making comments, wanting me to talk about this or that in Plato. And what we focused on was Plato, but Plato as a poet, where he's also the guy who's condemning the poets and condemning mimesis and condemning, condemning uh, representation. So how does he actually fit in there? Um, that, by the way, um, just to put in another plug for the Nietzsche video, that ties in with what Nietzsche was saying about Plato and the birth of tragedy. So that was a lot of fun. You can see there was a lot of uh, uh, teaching, learning, um, talks, you know, public engagement kind of stuff going on in February. I, I also should add, too, that my wife saw the culmination of something that she had put in four years of work towards, and that was bringing Temple Grandin, who you probably know about. She's a major researcher when it comes to both the meat industry and with respect to autism and learning styles, things like that. Uh, they made a movie about her. She's that, she's that famous. My wife brought her to the, to the Culinary Institute of America to do three days of talks and, and uh, meet and greets and dinners. So that was really cool. I, I enjoyed getting to spend a little bit of time with her and talk with her mainly about uh, prison education and about her forecasts for um, where we're falling short in terms of workplace training. Um, that, was, that was really fun to pick her brain on that. Um, but I was really proud of my wife, and I spent a good bit of time supporting her on that because it was a ton of work, a ton of management of little details, so, so good job to, to her. Um, Going back to February stuff, I shot a number of videos. I'm now pretty, uh, pretty productive. I'm actually having trouble finding time slots to fit all of them in because I don't want to overwhelm viewers. Um, the, the Religion in America class, we're using this textbook for that. That's ongoing, and I've been shooting a lot of video in class with that. Those are the bulk of what I've been uploading and releasing. Um, I also shot some existentialism videos on Gabriel Marcel, Jean-Paul Sartre. I, I wanted to get to more, but I, unfortunately I didn't. Uh, I did shoot a few of the 10 shorts videos, uh, number 13 and number 14, both of which had to do with questions in philosophy. I don't quite have enough questions for some of the other things yet, and so I'm waiting uh, before I release them to get a few more questions on like education or religion or, or, or you know, things along those lines. Um, I did a personal piece on anger, which is, is going to be followed up eventually by a number of other pieces having to do with anger, which is one of my areas of research. And I'm very happy to announce, if you haven't seen it already, that I began a new series, somewhat a bit more 
more produced, although it's still pretty low-tech stuff, on Hegel's Phenomenology of Spirit. And it's called Half Hour Hegel because each of the videos is going to be, you know, between 25 to 35 minutes, so roughly half an hour. And what I'm doing is I'm going through the entire Phenomenology of Spirit, paragraph by paragraph, first reading the text, which usually takes about a minute to read the paragraph, spending about anywhere from, you know, 5 to 15 minutes on commentary on that, telling you what Hegel's up to there, using my chalkboard, um, giving you a little bit of the background. He doesn't name names, so I tell you who he might be, you know, having in mind at the time. Um, and for me, this is, this is a project I've been wanting to start on for quite a while. People have been asking me to shoot more videos on Hegel, and in my view, this is the way to do it. I don't want to skip over anything. Uh, if this is successful, I think maybe I'll start doing some other thinkers like this as well. But this is going to take a while. Um, there's over 800 paragraphs in the phenomenology. Each video will, will comprise maybe two or three paragraphs. So we're talking about at least 300 videos. And if I release two a week, that means that it would take me at least a year and a half, probably closer to two years, of continual work on this, which I'm committed to, because I think this is a, a very important thing to do. I think there's not a lot of good quality resources out there on Hegel, and he is somebody who people want to, to read, and I'm all for that. So what I can do to help out with that, you know, if it takes me, it's, you know, roughly on my part a five to ten hour uh, commitment per week for the next two years, probably. That, so that's, that's what I'm doing. Um, I released the first one, and I have two more, more or less, ready to go this week, and I'm shooting more material later on this week. So <clears throat> there's all of that. Um, I also did some other things having to do with my professional life, uh, you know, besides public speaking and sort of doing philosophy in a public way and besides the, the YouTube videos. Uh, I edited a piece that I had written for a conference last year on Anselm, Morality, and, and God for publication eventually in uh, the journal Quaestionis Disputate. And I revised and then submitted a paper uh, which I'd previously written uh, and just sort of sat on for a while to, to a conference, an ethics conference, another one on Anselm. Uh, I can't tell you too much about it. I want to wait until it's actually accepted. But if it is, then, then you'll see a video on it sometime in April, and um, I'll, I'll put a link to the, the paper itself. So that's February. Um, March, we got a lot of cool stuff coming up. I'm not doing as much public speaking at uh, colleges and universities this month, but I am still continuing the, the library talks. <clears throat> I'm going to be talking about Dostoevsky during the Glimpses into Existence one. That'll be March 29th. So if you're in the, the Hudson Valley area in, in New York and or you want to make a day trip up from the city and you'd like to hear a... Uh, piece about Dostoevsky and get to do some, some Q&A and some discussion. Um, I'll be at the, the Kingston Library 1030 on Saturday, March 29th. Um, I'm also doing something, like I mentioned before, I'm doing a meetup in Kingston on Sunday, March 16th, and we're looking at doing another Dr. Sadler Philosophy Forum with a friend and colleague of mine, uh, who I know from, from McIntyre circles. He's a, a really smart guy, um, got some real good life experience too. He's a fellow vet. So we're going to talk probably about some issues in virtue ethics. We don't have it completely worked out, and I'm still waiting to hear back from him about the date. So that's what's, uh, what's going on with that. I'm also going to be giving some, some uh, footage, some actually some, some sound material to the punk rock philosopher for his show having to do with Friedrich Nietzsche's Thus Spoke Zarathustra, and we'll see how that works out. I might do some, some other things this month as well, but all of those things are still um, 
just in planning. So, I'm going to be doing a lot of video stuff as well this, this month. Um, I'm continuing the Religion in America class, of course. Um, there will be a few less videos because we're actually going to have spring break and we also have midterms coming up, so obviously I won't be shooting video that day. That'll allow me actually a chance to catch up on some other things. I'm going to be doing some more existentialism videos this month. I'm going to be focusing on, on Franz Kafka, on Simone de Beauvoir, and if I have the time, I want to do some more things on Rilke. Um, the half hour Hegel videos, you can probably expect to see about seven to eight of those coming out this month. So we're going to be a good ways into the preface for the phenomenology. I'm really excited about that. Uh, I might do some more 10 shorts videos if, like I said, if I get some more questions about those. And if I have the time, I'll shoot some more material about anger, but this is going to be a pretty busy month. Um, here's why. I've got some other things that aren't directly connected to videos that are going to be fairly time-consuming. I'm setting up that online class with a Plerno, which is very close now to receiving accreditation and very close to enrolling students. I'm working on an online existentialist class for a Plerno. When it's actually finished, approved, going live, I'll shoot a video about it basically telling you what's going to be in the course, what we're going to do, and justifying why somebody might want to pay $500 for a three-credit course uh, in, in existentialist thought with, with me. Because it's, it's, a, it's a course that will actually be offered for credit and will cost something and will have a lot of really cool components. If this works, a Plerno, if a Plerno's model actually works, if it's successful, this could be a way in which I might offer a lot of intensive courses on the things that I'm, I'm really interested in, in teaching about. Uh, and I would make quite a bit more money than I do as an adjunct teaching around here, in part because when you, when you hire an adjunct at a local university, the university is taking most of the money and the adjunct is getting quite a, you know, just a little bit of it. Uh, it's the opposite with a Plerno. They are deliberately setting things up so that the, the teacher gets the bulk of it and they just take a little bit and so things can be offered much more cheaply and it can provide a, what we call a living wage. Um, I'll be doing, I, I've been, I know I've been promising this for a while, but this is the month where I'm actually going to produce some new curious lessons. Um, I've really been behind on that, but it's, it's something that I, I really want to get going on. Um, like I said, I'm doing this collaboration with the punk rock philosopher who has a radio show on Saturday nights, and we'll see how that works out. Um, this is a new venture. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to pan out, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. Um, I am doing a lot of writing this month, a lot of research, a lot of sitting around reading, a lot of trying to get things set down on paper. Uh, in part because I need to write a paper for a conference I'm on the hook for in April, uh, the St. Anselm Conference, which will be at St. Anselm College. And I'm writing a paper on Anselm, uh, marriage, and conjugal love. Um, I'm also trying to work on a paper for the American Catholic Philosophical Association. The deadline is at the end of this month, and uh, it's, it's being held not too far from here, down in Washington, D.C., and the theme of the, the conference this year is something that I do a lot of work on, virtues. So I'm going to write about that. <clears throat> I'm also trying to get some more work done on the Aristotle and Anger book. Um, and on the Anselm and Moral Theory book, I, my goal is to actually like get a chapter um, in each of those in decent shape. Because I've got a lot of you know, bits and pieces that I've written here and there. But they're kind of they're kind of scattered, so I want to sort of hunker down when it when it comes to that and get those get the, some momentum going on those again. I'm also putting together, you know, you may not realize this, but but a lot of what I do is is uh, providing workshops and producing content and producing resources 
that take philosophy and, and apply it to not only ordinary people's lives, but also to organizations, to education, to the, the sort of big picture things that, that people are talking about, like, you know, what's the nature of happiness, or what does it count to, to flourish as a human being, or how should we assess uh, student learning, or how can we redesign processes. And so that takes quite a bit of, of work to take these ancient philosophers and find ways to adapt that to the present, and then to pitch workshops and talks to, to different institutions locally, and, and nationally. But that's part of what I'm engaged in. That's part of what we do at Reason.io. Um, I think with the video stuff, sometimes what you see is just kind of the tip of the iceberg. Uh, you, might get, you might get a somewhat, this is total aside at this point too, by the way, this isn't about updates. <laughs> but you might get a somewhat mistaken impression about just what it is that, that, that I do with my days um, by watching a few videos. Um, I you know I'm a firm believer and this is where I'll this is where I'll close things. I'm a firm believer that that classical and medieval philosophy contains all these great resources that super brilliant thinkers took lots of time to work out and then were nice enough to pass down to to the rest of us and that these things are still relevant in our own time. Uh, they're really helpful for making sense out of our lives, but you've got to do a bit of work, and it helps to have a guide and some structure in order to, to try to, you know, crack these nuts and get the kernel out and then, and then make them your own, make them part of your existence, out of who you are and what you want to do. That's what I do. That's my, my sort of mission. That's what my or are, Andy's and mine's, consulting company, Reason.io. That's what we're about. Um, so this is a month of building, in part, as well as all these other things that we're talking about, like shooting lots of video and uploading and, and events. But this is, this is sort of a, a month of, of building. Um, I suppose it's kind of apt that um, we're moving into spring. We're coming out of a, a winter of, of you know, slow, quiet, development and heading into a spring where things are going to start speeding up and a lot more things are going to be happening. Uh, the last thing I'll say is if you're interested in hearing me, me speak um, at your institution, um, your local library, your local college, I would suggest actually talking to them and saying, hey, we'd like to bring this guy in to do a talk about something. Um, all my information is out there, and I'm easy to contact. You can just, you know, email info at reasonio.com and pitch something to me. And if it's within my realm of competence, if it's not, I'll say I can't do that, but maybe I'll know somebody who can. If it's in my realm of competence, I'll certainly be interested in talking further about... Um, giving a talk or a workshop or producing content.